What's a favorite Thanksgiving memory that you have? I, uh, I'll tell you, I have a lot of them, because this time of year we used to celebrate my stepfather and my mom's dad, my grandfather's birthday during Thanksgiving. So we would go have Thanksgiving and we would celebrate their birthdays and it was a wonderful time uh, for us. And when my grandfather passed away, that sort of was the end of that getting together like that. And that was a little sad when it changed like that. But another uh, wonderful memory I have was a time in my life where I had very, very few things in my life. I had just moved from Ananda Village, which is a one of the most successful spiritual communities in the world uh, based on the teachings of Yogi Sage Paramahamsa Yogananda. I had just uh, lived there. I had moved from there to Sacramento and bought my, not bought, rented my first apartment ever. I had lived on my own, of course, at other situations, but I'd never rented my first apartment. And here I am in Sacramento, Sacra, uh, Sacramento, adjacent to the Sacramento Ananda community, and I was going to expand. I was already an ordained unity minister. I went to Ananda to deepen my understanding of Yogananda's teachings and to be in a community of people who were living it. So I had moved to Sacramento and was going to expand my speaking around Northern California and also start to speak in corporations. That was my my plan. You know what they say about your plan. <laughs> and so here I am in this apartment, and I, I just moved there. I had very few things. I've been living well below the poverty level for the last three years. And so I don't even know how I leased that apartment, really. I don't know what, how that worked out. But I had my own apartment. I had very few things. I was living in a corner of a trailer for a couple of years, in Ananda Village, and I mean literally a corner, you know. And, you know, the mattress was on the floor, and I think I had an office chair I'd bought and an old computer, but I had a fireplace, and that was cool. You know, I took one of those colored logs and put it in the fireplace, and I thought I was in heaven. I had a fireplace. But I had so few things that somebody must have seen the stuff I was moving into that apartment, which wasn't much, because they left a turkey with canned goods on my uh, doorstep. Now, they didn't know I was a vegetarian, but, uh, you know, that was touched by that, and they must have seen this guy's got such, you know, nothing. He probably needs some food this Thanksgiving. So I must have given that turkey away to somebody who, who needed it. But... The community that I was living next to, the Ananda community, they were having this Thanksgiving gathering, and I decided to make a nut loaf. You know what a nut loaf is? You know, I think, I don't even remember. I haven't made one since. But this was in 1998, I believe it was. And, you know, tofu maybe is in it, and nuts, and it had a cashew gravy where I blended the cat. My kitchen looked like a mess. But I remember taking this nut loaf to the community Thanksgiving, and I just felt so full of joy that Thanksgiving. I didn't have many things. I didn't have much money, but my heart was full of joy, grateful, being filled with the greatness of your spirit of God, the greatness of God. And so today we're talking about living grateful, living simply with gratitude, right? I was living simply. That whole community that I was involved in lived very simply. They were up in the mountains of the Sierra Nevadas, Nevada City, California, and there was not a lot of money flowing around up there. They lived simply, but let me tell you, those people were happy. They were happy. I mean, you know, it's nice having money, though. I remember, you know, I'm not saying throw away your stuff <laughs> unless you're not using it. We're going to talk about that. How do we live simply today, you know? 
because I, I do remember I was dating a girl with two sons. They were young kids, 10 and 12, and I bought, like, Christmas gifts for them out of the dollar store. <laughs> and compared to that Nintendo or whatever they were buying at that time, the kids opened my puzzle that I bought, and they looked at their mom like, what the, how do I respond to this, you know? Other than those moments, I was pretty happy. Spank those little brats, no. So, you know, how do we, how do we live simply? St. Paul said, in all things give thanks, right? In all things give thanks. That isn't, he didn't say for all things give thanks. He didn't say, oh, I'm so grateful for my hurting back. He didn't say just give thanks for everything. He said, in all things give thanks. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, I think it means that you are so grateful for life. You're so aware of the miracle of life, of being here on planet Earth, of being in a body, of what that means, that you are simply grateful to be alive. You're like a little kid. You know, little kids before the age of five, they're just full of vibrant. They're just full of life. They're happy to, you know, wow, look, a cricket. Oh, look at this or that. They're just, they're alive. I think it means to be so alive with life. I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly that you're just grateful. You're filled with your own greatness. You're so filled with joy and love and, and aliveness of your being that you can't help but to be grateful in all things. How many of y'all would like to live that kind of a way? Yeah, see, we still have some room for growth, don't we? We still have room for growth, don't we? Yes, we do. Because, you know, what gets in the way? Complicated. As Wayne Dyer says, our ego overcomplicates stuff. Our, our, we're overcomplicating our life. Overcomplicating stuff. We overcomplicate it. So how do we simplify it? What can we do to simplify our life so that we can start to... He says if we overcomplicate it, if we clutter up our 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 life with ego stuff, then we're not going to be open to the inspiration. Don't we want to be open to this constant flow of inspiration? Of course we do. But it's hard to if you overcomplicate your life. He says we can simplify our life with three priorities. Joy, love, and peace. Joy, love, and peace. That's different than a lot of people's uh, lifestyle, isn't it? Their priorities. Joy, love, and peace. Those are higher level psychological growth-oriented priorities. Read modern psychological studies. And you'll find that a lot of people are stuck in the safety, security. That's important for us, too. We all need the safety and security. But that's sort, of a, that's sort of a lower kind of a, you know, that's not our highest levels of growth and unfoldment to get stuck in safety and security. We all need it, though. We need to continually be in that safety and security. That's part of it. But safety and security manifests as stuff like a need for to be popular. You know that? Safety and security needs manifest as I want to be famous. Safety and security needs, I, I, I need more, more wealth. I need more power. I need more status. These are things that our society holds up, right? Like this is what it's all about. Those are, those are lower needs in the psychological scale of self-actualization and transcendence. We do need security and safety. But our higher order, our higher psychological needs 
are for growth, are for self-actualization, are for transcendence. That's important too. And if we're striving after the other stuff because we're stuck in the safety security, then we're not going to be fulfilled because we're not fulfilling our highest needs, which we would say as a spiritual being, our divinity. Psychologists would say, well, your higher psychological needs that you have, fulfill those. So that's what joy, love, and peace our higher order, our growth needs as spiritual beings and as emotional, psychological health. So joy. How many of you grew up hearing that the message of Jesus was all about joy? Not too many, right? You see pictures of an emaciated guy on a cross. It doesn't look too joyful, does it? Jesus didn't look too happy in that situation. And yet he said, I've come that my joy might be in you and your joy might be full. Wow. The Hindus, the yogis have been saying, God is Satchitananda, conscious eternal joy. Conscious eternal joy. That our deepest longing is to know the joy of spirit. That's the deepest longing. Everybody who ever does anything really wants joy. Michael Singer makes the point that if you look at everything that you want, and this is part of the ego, the ego says, I'm not okay inside. I'm missing something. I'm empty. Something's lacking. What do I need? Well, if I'm lonely, obviously, I need a partner. I need a a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse. I need more friends. That's what the ego believes it needs. What does the spiritual being say it needs? It needs more of God. It needs more of the realization of the love that flows from the one source of God. That's what it needs. That's what we really need. We need that love that flows inside of us. Otherwise, we become a taker. I need somebody to give me what I want. I need somebody to love me the way I want to be loved. We become a taker. But when we become filled up with love, when we know the real source of love, and we feel it inside, now we share it. And if you want to share it with me, great. Now we got two whole people in a relationship with each other. Two people sharing love. Right? Anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? The ego says, I feel insecure, I don't feel safe. Obviously, I need more people to like me. And if somebody doesn't like me, I need to find out why they don't like me. Why did she look at me like that? I said hello and she didn't say anything back. Oh, my God, what did I just say? I shouldn't have said that. I should have said this. I should have said that. I wanted to, oh, yeah, yeah, huh? Anybody ever do that? Oh, why I could have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Oh. That's all, you know, that's, that's all this, this need for outer approval. That's the need for other people to, to like me. I'm popular. I'm well-liked. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, is that the highest order of what we're here on the planet to develop? No, it's not. 
It's to wake up to that divinity so that we are full of the presence and activity of spirit. So now it's not about, I need people to like me. I need to be popular. Now it's about, how can I share? How can I make a difference? How can I be a blessing? And if people like me or don't like me, I don't care. How many of you like that freedom in your life? How many of y'all are going to be with some relatives in this coming week? Anybody going to be with family and friends this Thanksgiving? Good. Where are you going to be for the holidays? In New York, another state? Tell us online. Where are you going to be for the holidays? Yeah, New York. Okay. Anybody going out of the New York City area and somewhere else? West Virginia. Oh, way out to Long Island. Oh. <laughs> West Virginia. All right. Nice. Well, Ram Dass said, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your relatives. <laughs> that brings us to priority number two, love. <laughs> we said joy. We said love. Love, right? Being a priority. Love is important, right? <laughs> Jesus thought love was important. He said, love God. Love your neighbor, love yourself, and we could expand and say love humanity, but not, not love humanity in the way Charlie Brown said. I love all humanity. It's people I don't like. <laughs> no, the Bible says how you love God is expressed by how you love people. Right? If you, don't like, if you don't love people, you don't love God because we're all connected, right? I'm always amazed by people in metaphysics who have spent years coming to metaphysics and listening to lectures and all that, and they're as grumpy as can be. Anybody ever see that? Just negative, argumentative. It's like, are you listening to anything? But you know what? We can listen, but it's got to go from the head to the heart, doesn't it? Head full of knowledge does not make one awakened, right? It's, it's what do you see? That's what the Bible says, the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit. What kind of fruits? Is there patience? Is there kindness? Is there understanding? Is there compassion? Now we're growing. Now we see, oh, I guess I am growing. And we got to be patient with ourselves, too, you know, patient with ourselves, loving with ourselves. So simplifying, joy, putting joy as a priority. <clears throat> Yogananda said to have the attitude that I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. Even-minded and cheerful at all times. I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. Would you say that with me? I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. Again, I am even-minded and cheerful at all times. Let me ask you, would that simplify your life? If you made the commitment that you're going to be even-minded and cheerful no matter what goes on in your life, what does that mean, even-minded? It means, it means this. It means what people mostly are is not even-minded. They go up when things go the way their ego wants them to go, and they go down when things don't go the way their ego wants them to go. Right? That's not even-minded. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about learning to develop the ability to be in joy no matter what's going on around us or happening to us. That's what the spiritual being is about. It's not about attracting the right relationship. It's not about attracting the right job. It's not about attracting the perfect health. All of that's great, and we all want that, but that's not ultimately what the highest spiritual perspective is. It's learning to be in joy no matter what's going on around us. In all things, give thanks. And that's a difficult message to hear. But I'm here this morning not to deliver a simple message that everybody wants to hear about 
you can attract wealth and this and that through a grateful mind. You can get that other places. But you're not going to hear what I'm talking about this morning in too many places. And that is that you as a spiritual being are here to enjoy life on its own terms, to be able to accept life as it is, to be even-minded no matter what happens in our life, to be able to accept what happens and to live in this state of joy in all things give thanks. I think that's what Paul meant. He meant to be so in tune with your spiritual essence that it doesn't matter what happens. And that to recognize that being here on the planet, the specialness of that, the specialness of this, you are on a planet where there's nothing else happening anywhere else in the universe. Do you realize that? Really, if you go to Mars, there's nothing there but dust. You go to Venus, there's hydrochloric acid being rained down. There's nothing else going on out in the universe. But somehow you and I ended up here on this planet where there's all kinds of things going on. It's a circus. <laughs> it's a circus. There's colors, there's sounds, there's people of different shapes and sizes and, and, and belief systems and all that. It's all going on right here. And we could have been maybe anywhere on the planet. You know, there's nothing else happening anywhere else. It's all happening right here on the planet. And you won the lottery. You won the lottery. It's true. You won the lottery. You are here where everything's happening. Oh, but I don't have the relationship I want. Oh, okay. But you're here. Yes. Look at all the people. Wow. Yeah, but I don't have the apartment the way I want it to be. Oh. You got an apartment. Yes. Yes. You got an apartment. Yes. Simplify. Simplify our thinking. And you know what? This is a lot easier to talk about than it is to do, isn't it? <laughs> How many times do we hear an inspiring message go out on the street and somebody took my subway seat? <laughs> that stupid bus is late. What is wrong with the metro system? I should move to Germany. <laughs> you know? Silly stuff. The ego. But that's where we need to practice. We need to practice with the little thing. Practice with the little, practice being even minded and cheerful with the little things. Joy. Dr. Dyer recommends have, give yourself some leisure time, have more play time. How many of y'all are playing in your life? Are you, you have time to do some things that are fun for yourself? Don't overcomplicate your schedule with so many obligatory things that don't inspire you that don't bring you satisfaction. You know, how many, how many social things people go to? Because that's what you're supposed to do. But does it inspire you? So for those of you going to be with your relatives this weekend as we talk about love, back to love, <laughs> trying to avoid love, but I'm back to love. Just kidding. I remember a transforming time in my life. I was in college. I was reading the Bible for the first time, uh, consciously anyway. And um, I remember reading, Honor Your Father and Your Mother. And I thought, this is what I'm asked to do, honor my father and my mother. I'm going to start doing a better job with honoring my father and my mother. What can I do to honor my father and my mother? What does that mean? Well, it certainly doesn't mean what you see a lot of today, talking back to your mother and your father. Preach. Talking nasty to your mother and your father. 
being critical of your mother, trying to, trying to tell your mother and your father what they should be doing. <laughs> when I did that, you know, I was new into metaphysics and I had all the answers and all this stuff and I'm telling mom what, how, you know, mom don't talk like that. She, one day she said, you think you're so perfect. <laughs> Charity begins in the home. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Honor thy father and thy mother. It started to change my whole relationship with my parents. I mean, I was never a terrible kid, but did I take it to the level of honor my mother and my father? Yeah, I started to realize, you know what? My mother and my father, they're not here to take care of me. I'm an adult. They're people just like me. They have their own needs. They want to be happy too. That's why they had me. They thought it would bring more joy in their life or whatever. Are we bringing joy to our parents? Or is the parent going, gee, I don't know what happened there. Are you sure he's ours? <laughs> you know, let's be real here now. I've heard parents talk about some of their kids. Right? Honor thy father and the mother. They're adults just like the rest of us. And being with family and relatives is challenging because there's so much conditioning. I don't know what your family was like, but mine was not always easy to be around. And there's deep conditioning there, habitual responses. So you might be all loving and joyful and all that, and then you go with your family, and now you might find the pull of habit patterns pulling you back into how you used to respond. Now, some of you are parents, and your kids, you're going to be with your kids, and you might find that conditioning, well, I'm the mother, or I'm the, I'm the father, or whatever, and I've got to be a certain way, and all that. Remember, your kids are spiritual beings. And if they're over 18, realize they're spiritual beings and trust that activity in them, right? Trust that activity in them. It's nothing worse than a parent who, who is telling the child subconsciously, you don't have what it takes. I need to take care of you and tell you what to do. They're divinity. They're God incarnate. So it goes both ways. So the, the idea is this for love, and we all love is important. You remember that you might have heard the story of the two infants who they were one week old. They were both in incubators, and the doctors didn't think one of them was going to live. And one of this true story, one of the nurses went against hospital policy and insisted that they put both of the infants together in the same incubator. And when they did, the healthier sister embraced the other one with her arm. And at that point, the other sister's heart rate started to level out. Her blood pressure changed, and it made all the difference in the world. Love, sharing love is healing. So when we're with relatives, with children, with parents, it's a great growth opportunity if we stay conscious. It's a great growth opportunity if we go into that not thinking about what are my needs and how is Uncle Harry going to treat me and how the parents can be with me. How am I going to show up for them? Does that make sense? How can I be compassionate? How can I be loving? How can I lift up them? How can I be present for my mom, my dad, my uncle, my sister, my brother, instead of showing up with the same old patterns that I showed up before? See a shift there? You're going in as a new creation. Lo, all things are made new. You're going in as a spiritual being who is there to... Be the light with those folks. And guess what? When you fail, or if you have your moments, 
That's wonderful growth because that shows you where you are. I could only be with my mom and, and for about a week. After that, I had to get the heck out of there. I don't care if I was an ordained minister, lived at Ananda Village, and meditated daily. After a week, my stepfather got so angry once with my mother, he said, you would make Jesus Christ cuss. He was right. She could make Jesus Christ cuss. So... Simplify your life. Make joy a priority. Make love a priority. And make peace a priority. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. What does that mean? That means an inner peace. That means you hold the key. Peace is inside of you. Are we going to constantly keep looking out there for inner peace? Are we going to constantly keep looking out here for what do I need? What do I want? How am I going to get it in order for me to be whole and complete? Or am I going to start to look within myself and say, wait a minute, it's within me. Peace is within me. Joy is within me. Love is within me. And, and I'm going to stop running after everything that the world says is important for me to have in order to feel good inside myself. I'm okay. I'm okay. I can be okay. I can be. I don't need her to approve me. I don't need him to like me. I don't need everybody to think the way I think. I can be content within myself. I can be peaceful within myself. I can be a light in the world, not a taker, not a taker, but a sharer, someone who has more to share with the world. And some other ways to simplify our life, Dr. Dow, you can read about them in the book, How to Simplify Your Life, Get Rid of Stuff You Don't Need. Anybody got stuff you don't need? Get stuff you don't, give away stuff you don't need. Donate it. You haven't worn it in a year or two, give it away. You got some files you don't need? Give them away. Clear your calendar of unwanted and unnecessary activities and obligations. Don't be overscheduled. Say no. No to stuff that doesn't inspire you. Dr. Dyer says, if cocktail parties, social get-togethers, fundraising events, or even drinking and gossiping gatherings with friends aren't really how you want to spend your free time, then don't. Begin declining invitations that don't activate feelings of inspiration. He says, I find that an evening spent reading or writing letters, watching a movie with a loved one, having dinner with my children, or even exercising alone is far more inspiring than getting dressed to attend a function often filled with small talk. I've learned to be unavailable for such events, without apologizing, and consequently have more inspired moments freed up. He's another great one. He says, put distance between you and your critics. It's one thing for someone to offer advice and you say, thank you, I appreciate that, I'll give that some consideration. But he says, beyond that, it becomes an argument. It becomes a, a, a conflict. Give those who find fault or who are confrontational a silent blessing and remove yourself from their energy as quickly as possible. Doesn't matter if their name is Uncle Bill. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Aunt Jenny. Mom, Mom he said. <laughs> Bless you, Mom. I'm going to go over there and get some more punch. <laughs> I know one lady, she didn't go home for Thanksgiving. She was like, every time I go home for Thanksgiving, it's chaotic. Well, who said you have to go home for Thanksgiving? Yeah. I don't have to go home for Thanksgiving? No, you don't have to go home for Thanksgiving. Well, maybe I'll go a different time. That's fine. Go a different time. 
Oh, Lord, Justin's really stepping into it now. <laughs> Wayne Dyer says, Your life is simplified enormously when you don't have to defend yourself to anyone and when you receive support rather than criticism. You don't have to endure the criticism with anything other than a polite thank you and a promise to consider what's been said. Anything else is a state of conflict that erases the possibility of your feeling inspired. You never need to defend yourself or your desires to anyone as those inner feelings are spirit speaking to you. Those thoughts are sacred, so don't ever let anyone trample on them. But do it with kindness. Do it with patience. Do it with love. That should help us get through Thanksgiving. <laughs> Gratefully. <laughs> So let's simplify our life. Joy, love, and peace. And when that stuff comes up inside of us where we feel lonely or we start going, the mind starts, monkey mind starts going, well, I don't know why he said that. And oh, I need more of this. I need more of that. Why isn't life doing this? Why isn't it going this way? I don't understand. Why is the train late? Why, you know, the... The apple pie, they ate the apple pie, didn't save me a piece. You know, whatever it is. When all that starts going on, take a deep breath. Let me allow those feelings to flow through me. Let me relax. Let me relax. Let me lift my mind up to a higher place. Let me bring my mind to a higher place, whether it's an affirmation, a Bible verse, taking a walk around the block, whatever it is. Get my mind to a higher place so that I can be more of who I am as a spiritual being and fulfill what Paul was talking about. In all things, give thanks. After all, I'm on the planet, I'm with friends and family, or I'm by myself eating a meal that I can afford to eat. I'm on the planet, I got stuff, I got things, I know people, there's stuff going on around me. This is where it's happening. There are a, a million of these planets that can fit in our one sun, and there are 200 million suns in our galaxy, and there are 2 trillion galaxies. What am I worried about? I won the lottery. I'm on the planet. Not only am I just on the planet, I'm a spiritual being given dominion and authority over my mind and my heart, so I claim it this Thanksgiving.